Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. So, we have UFC 271 this weekend. The rematch we've all been waiting for, other than Usman Covington 2, we have Robert Whitaker versus Israel Adesanya. A lot of people are looking forward to it, along with um, many people in Australia, New Zealand. I'm sure they're you know, looking to see who's going to get the uh, bragging rights this time because there's a big rivalry between the two countries. Um, however, the, for the fighters, it's not really going to matter as much. I think it's just going to be more of who's better, who has the higher skill set, and uh, overall, who's going to settle the score, right? And uh, I'm looking at a lot of things this week. I'm looking at people's posts. I'm looking at the opinions. I'm looking at where the line is. And a lot of people are doubting Whitaker. A lot of people are, you know, overlooking him in a lot of ways. And I get it. Like, he was KO'd. Uh, and especially he was dropped at the end of the first round. And he didn't look that good, uh, you know, after he was kind of found out by Israel in that first fight. However, however, I'm not going to be one of those people who doubts Whitaker in this fight. I think that there are going to be a lot of things that Whitaker can change in the time span that he has had to bring into this fight and prepare him to get a victory in this fight. Now, I'm not saying that will happen. However, I think that he has had enough time. He has reflected on it. And he has done some things in his game to make a difference. And I'm going to speak about that. But first, I also want to say that Israel has been getting better as well. Now, there could be a stagnation on Israel's part because he was in lockdown because of New Zealand and Australia, they have really, really strict restrictions. You know, Robert Whitaker could be a little bit on the, uh, you know, slower side as well. So it's, you know, it's a little bit of a tough call because if you look at Israel's last fight against Vittori, you know, if that was Robert Whitaker, Robert Whitaker would have beat Israel in that moment, okay? Um, so with this fight be, being, you know, in a lax situation where they haven't had enough time to train and you know proper you know uh per preparation i guess you could say because of the lockdowns and because of the the things that are going on in their countries this could be a little bit of a different fight and more predominantly i think robert whitaker has more to learn from that first fight than israel did israel did a lot of things right in that first fight Okay, Israel had the perfect scenario outline happen for him in that first fight. Really, it was very rare times where Israel did something incorrect. Robert Whitaker had very sloppy moments in the first fight. Okay, um, his striking was very, very sloppy. Okay, now I know that he has a very uh, odd style, right? He likes to come in with the jab. He likes to lean his head off of the center line, and he likes to throw little combos and then hit you up top with the high kick. He's very good. He's very tricky at times, for sure. He gets a lot of people with that. However, Israel Adesanya is a high IQ striking individual. He is not going to be fooled by these little movements, by you coming in in that way. Um, he's just going to kind of learn your movements, download it, and then try to find that opening at the last second. And what was he able to do? You look at that first round be between the two the first time, Whitaker was doing a lot of things pretty well. Breaking down the cadence of Israel Adesanya, which is the number one thing you must do against Adesanya. It's something that Kelvin Gastelum was able to do to Adesanya, and he had a lot of success with it. The only problem is, is that when you break down the cadence, you are offering that exchange to happen, right? Israel Adesanya is the longer target, right? He has more of a reach advantage. He has a big reach advantage over a guy like Gastelum, but Gastelum was still able to find the little openings for him to explode in. That space is necessary. Whitaker did not do a good enough job of opening up that space. He kind of forced his hand a little bit too fast he kind of got started a little bit too early on the game plan. Adesanya recognized it and was able to pick him apart from when he's finishing the combo. And Whitaker in that first fight did a lot of sloppy footwork techniques as well. 
So the first part about it, he was starting behind the jab, which is definitely a good thing, working his way in. However, Whitaker at the end of his combination would move to his left, but be throwing a right hand. That is like a bad technique because when you throw the left hand, you're supposed to move to the left. When you throw the right hand, you're supposed to duck under and move to the right. You're supposed to, you know, right hand, move to the right. Um, left hand, move to the left, right? That's, you know, striking 101. He was throwing a left, then a right, and then moving to the left to get countered, immediately get countered. That's like a counter right signal. And Adesanya, being the high IQ striker that he is, took advantage of it, saw that opening, and exploited it right away. And you saw Whitaker got chinned three times in this fight. So the first round, Whitaker got dropped, right? And it's the same way. In the second round, Adesanya, like literally a minute before he actually KO'd him, hit him with the same combo that he hit him with to end the fight. So that three times, Whitaker got caught the same way three times. That is major, major um mistakes on Whitaker's team, his game plan, whatever it was, he did not switch things up enough. In this fight, he has a major opportunity to change the way he looks at this fight and he approaches it, okay? And what I think he's going to do, he's rewatched this fight many times. His team has rewatched this fight many times. They're going to know their mistakes. I think what's going to happen is this fight is going to be a lot more competitive it's going to go all five rounds. No one's getting a finish in this fight, in my opinion. I think this is going to be a fight of the year candidate, if not the fight of the year. And I think Robert Whitaker is going to learn from the mistakes that he he uh, made in the first fight. He's going to utilize two things that are going to be different. The first one is breaking down the cadence the same way that he did, but being more patient about it, not rushing in in that way once he breaks down the cadence learn for learn where you'll you'll see the openings be patient and then exploit them in those moments he's gonna have to work on moments in this fight he cannot get crazy and then get sporadic that's something that he likes to do and he'll get caught and he'll get chinned if he does that again okay the second thing is when adesanya opens up and there's many times where he opens up robert whitaker he was this close to him. Like, their feet were right on top of each other. There were moments in this fight where Whitaker is in the pocket, Adesanya is in the pocket. Their feet are right next to each other. Literally, if one person stepped on the other's foot, they're in a, um, they're in a tire, essentially, right? In that moment, Robert Whitaker can either use a body lock or go to a single leg takedown, turn it into a high crotch, and get Israel on the ground. Here's the thing. In this fight, I think he's going to be able to do that. But he has to work off of those two takedown attempts. He cannot, and I repeat, he cannot go for a blast double leg against a guy like Israel Adesanya. He's too explosive. He'll see it coming from a mile away. Robert Whitaker is not a natural-born wrestler, and therefore, Israel can defend that takedown more easily. Robert's best strategy here is to fake low come high with a left hook his left hook is very clean attack the legs early and as as israel is starting to open up a little bit more and he's trying to get comfortable when robert ducks under and changes levels to go up top with the hook instead of doing that israel's going to be looking for that hook to come up or he's going to be looking for that exit as israel's doing that robert needs to move to his right move to his right pivot to his right and get either a body lock or go for a single leg takedown because Adesanya, even if he sees it coming, he's still not going to have that sort of interpretation. He's not going to have that sort of connection on it right away because he's thinking a different attack is coming. If he can do that, it makes Israel um, put his back against the wall in a situation where he has to look out for takedowns and he has to look out for over-the-top strikes. And those are two things that Israel is not used to having to deal with, okay? If Whitaker can do this successfully and getting Adesanya down on the ground, either through a single leg high crotch or 
going with a body lock, Whitaker has to control him on the ground. Whitaker must stay in half guard. Do not attempt to go to mount right away because Adesanya is very active and he's very good at scrambling. He will get out of there if you go from your position too quickly. Whitaker must transition efficiently and he must be efficient throughout the entire fight. I think with this strategy, Whitaker is going to be able to take Izzy down. However, I don't know that if he can keep him there. I really don't know if he can keep Adesanya down. I think he will be able to get at least two takedowns in this fight. Um, he may be able to get to half guard, but I ultimately see Adesanya being able to get out, um, have his moments in the fight. He may even land a head kick on, on Whitaker. He may even land a couple body shots as well. Um, this is going to be a very back and forth competitive fight. Uh, and overall, here's what I see happening. Whitaker learns from the first fight, implements that new game plan, like I said, actually follows through with it. It works for him. Three out of the five rounds, Adesanya does what he normally does, which is attack the legs, attack the long strikes, um, look for his opening uh, openings and be very efficient and smart. Um, and just, you know, kind of picking you apart from the outside all fight long. Um, gets Whitaker against the cage maybe once or twice. Um, and it looks really good in the eyes of the judges. And this fight is going to be very, very close. Make no mistake about it. I think what will happen is that Whitaker will win in the eyes of the fans. He may win more, uh, more rounds than Adesanya in the eyes of the fans. Um, and overall, just to everyone watching. However, I think he won't be able to do enough to convince the judges. And Israel will still retain the championship and will win on the judges' scorecards. And a lot of people are going to be shouting robbery. Maybe I might even be you know, chanting robbery as well. But I think it's going to be a situation where Whitaker probably gets robbed. And... You know, the judges just weren't convinced enough by the performance of Whitaker to give the title back to Whitaker. I think this is going to be a is going to be a controversial decision. Most likely, in my opinion, that's just the way I see it happening. Um, but that's what I think about it. Let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments, um, who you guys think will win, how it's going to happen, um, and overall, just your thoughts and opinions on the fight. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.